Welcome back guys. It's a good time to be an Apple fan. Since we last spoke, so much has changed. Apple's entire plans for 2020 and 2021 have leaked for the iPhone and let me assure you, Face ID and the notch are no longer a part of that plan. AirPods 3 info has leaked and I've got a very cool concept to show you regarding that one. The iPhone SE or what I'm calling the China edition Touch ID iPhone, more details on that, just a ton of leaks including new iPads. So. Lots to talk about, let's get into it. So before AirPods 2 were released, there was a ton of info regarding a new redesign, a bunch of features such as biometric sensors coming to the AirPods, new color, a matte texture, and so far we haven't seen any of that. Now the latest rumors are cropping up, and this isn't just coming from one analyst, several, including Ming-Chi Ko, all agree that by end of year, we will be receiving AirPods 3. If you bought AirPods 2, I'm sorry to report, but just like me, I bought a new MacBook, then the new 8 core came out, and now the 16 inch MacBook Pro is coming out by end of year. Yes, Apple likes to refresh and change things quite often. Now Apple is trying to catch the holiday season with these AirPods, and the analyst is claiming we will be seeing some design improvements as well as some higher price points. Now I'm calling them AirPods Pro. I don't know what they'll be called. I'm assuming that Apple doesn't wanna call them AirPods 3 and immediately outdate the two which just came out. But then again, we don't know that. By the way, this amazing AirPods concept was provided by Jack Dota. He sent me the files upon request. So thank you, man. I love it. This was originally intended to be an AirPods 2 concept and I still like it. It's kind of futuristic. I don't exactly know how it would improve on the sound or design when the ports are smaller, but it looks cool. And moving on, regarding AirPods 3, what were they supposed to be or what will they be? They're supposed to have noise isolation. So for the first time ever, AirPods will be isolated and it'll sound much quieter. I'm using the Bose 700s right now. I gotta tell you, it is one of the coolest features to have on a headset. Water resistance is supposed to be standard. So like the Powerbeats Pro, these will include splash and water resistance or so go the rumors. Also a system on a package chip. So internally, this thing will be more efficient, a more dense logic board on the inside, helping with production. Also a black color was rumored and a matte texturized coating. I'm sure that's still gonna happen and biometric sensors. So we might be seeing a heart rate sensor or a temperature sensor, something to do with health and fitness. So that's AirPods 3, very exciting stuff. If you haven't bought version two, definitely worth upgrading to from version one. Not so sure about version two, but we'll see by end of year. Now moving on to 2020 iPhones, where the changes really start happening. We know that 2019 iPhones are more of a stopgap release. Apple is just getting the iPhone ready for the 2020 iPhone changes. JP Morgan with their latest release is confirming, yes, we will be seeing four new iPhones in 2020 with new screen sizes, 5.4 inch, 6.1, and a 6.7 inch mammoth iPhone. Now in the report, they touch on a value category iPhone. This is a 4.7 inch display releasing in 2020. And this is where my speculation comes in, but hear me out. I think that this device will be the iPhone SE, Shanghai edition. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, it was rumored that it would be just for China in the last report. This report doesn't mention anything about that, just that it is happening. The 4.7 inch iPhone is going to be more of a budget category device with a full screen Touch ID sensor. Touch ID, even at a full screen capacity, is cheaper than the Face ID modules. The laser scanning modules, dot projector, those are all very expensive components. So Apple wants to minimize the cost, of course, on a value category iPhone, and they're including Touch ID. It'll look pretty cool, I'm assuming. I doubt it'll have a square screen as how can Apple sell something so outdated next to these futuristic looking 2020 iPhones. So I'm assuming personally that it'll have a full screen display with either a very small notch or a pinhole camera, but we'll get into the notch stuff in a second here. The second source is saying all iPhones will have smaller notches in 2020. The reason I think it'll be a refreshed iPhone SE is we've simply heard too many rumors for it not to be. At this point, from many different sources, we've heard of this mysterious device with iPhone 8 internals that'll have a smaller display sold alongside all the latest and greatest iPhones. So let me know if you guys agree with that down below in the description. I personally, you know, based on all the research I've done, that's, that's the best I could come up with. It'll be an iPhone SE with a larger display matching that of the iPhone 8. Midway through rendering, we heard some news coming from Ming-Chi Ko in China Times regarding the future of the notch, or more like no notch in the future. And I was wondering, what is Apple doing with the notch? Because doing all the research, I couldn't find anything. Last I heard from Ice Universe in December, Apple would be using a camera cutout like the Galaxy S10 in the new iPhones, and they own the patent for it, so they certainly could go that route. But this latest report from both of these sources is painting a prettier picture for the future of the iPhone. 
Now in 2020, Ming-Chi Ko is saying that the iPhone will be using a smaller camera lens on the front, thus paving the way for a smaller notch on the iPhone. So the 2020 iPhones will have smaller notches for the iPhones that'll have Face ID. Now, China Times is reporting that in 2020, we'll be seeing one iPhone with no notch whatsoever with an embedded camera beneath the display and an acoustic Touch ID sensor on the entire display. So all those Touch ID patents that Apple has been hoarding, they'll finally be using for something here. And starting in 2020, only one iPhone is getting that technology. Now, which iPhone could that be? I'm personally guessing the 5.4 inch. It's the smallest iPhone in a while. Apple is shrinking their popular 5.8 inch display to 5.4. And since the OLED display came first on a smaller iPhone, I'm assuming they would do the same thing here with a 5.4 inch iPhone. So that one will be getting Touch ID first, in my opinion, or it could be the 6.7 inch. And a year past that, China Times is reporting Apple is switching the entire lineup to that new Touch ID strategy. The entire screen will feature an acoustic fingerprint sensor and beneath the display embedded underneath the pixels will be a camera. So they'll be using some pixel shifting technologies where they go translucent and then they can take a picture through it to compensate with software like Oppo and Vivo have recently released. So the future is almost here. It's so strange for me to hear this coming from Apple. Like you'd think they drag their feet until 2021 with the notch. At this pace, would they ever even get rid of it? But I'm so glad to hear that they're finally transitioning to the future. Johnny Ives' dream, even though he's no longer here, was a flat slab of glass with no visible protrusions, no cameras, just all display on the front. We're just a couple years away from that future. It is so crazy to hear that. Now, I specifically remember around the release time of the iPhone 10, Apple said that once they saw how Face ID was superior over Touch ID security-wise, convenience-wise, they never looked back at Touch ID. Now it appears they're looking back and bringing it back from the dead. My point is, it's not necessarily a bad thing to go back to a certain technology just because it wasn't ideal at a certain time period. You know, with time, it's been improved and I'm sure the acoustic technology will help with speed a lot. It'll be faster than Face ID for sure. So Apple going back to Touch ID, it's not impossible. Everyone said, you know, never gonna happen, but look at it now. It's actually going to happen from what we're hearing. And I'm tying this in with 3D Touch dying. Now a third source, Digitimes, is reporting Apple is finally done with 3D Touch. They're no longer including it in the 2019 iPhones and beyond. So it kind of makes sense why iOS 13 was starting to shy away from some of the 3D Touch features. Apple's just getting us ready for that future without it. And basically it's okay to leave certain technologies in the past if it means there's a better replacement. And I'm sure there will be, I mean, I hope Apple. Also for the doubters, how likely is that under the screen camera technology and the acoustic fingerprint technology? Apple has a slew of patents regarding both all the way back from 2004 and 2009. Before the iPhone was even released, Apple was working on a camera sensor beneath the display. It blows my mind looking that far back at patents, but Apple's been aiming for this technology since the beginning and everything is becoming clearer and clearer now. It's certainly the future and Apple does have the means to produce it. Moving on to some other Apple products, the iPad 10.2 inch, the budget model, which is replacing the 9.7 inch is coming, entering production this month. We heard about it long ago. Now Taiwanese based Economic Daily News is confirming it's entering production this month and we should be seeing it by end of year likely. Also confirmed by the Eurasian Economic Commission, several new listings for this device have shown up there. So yes, new iPads are coming, but not Pro models until next year. In a bunch of MacBook news, from the same source, the 16 inch MacBook Pro will be entering production at the end of this year. So I'm assuming we might see an announcement at the iPhone event with a release at the earliest early 2020. Also, Apple is working on some keyboard patents, including lighting and possibly an improved scissor switch keyboard, supporting the earlier rumor they will be switching to that, and a ton of MacBook upgrades from the Apple Store. So the MacBook Pro 13 inch has been bumped up in base spec, you're getting a lot more for your money, 83% improved performance over the last model from 2017. Apple killed the MacBook 12 inch line, which I think was a very smart move. They haven't touched it since 2017, and with the new MacBook Air, it's been very confusing. They've updated that one as well with True Tone, lowered the prices across the board of SSDs on all their computers, all around very good changes. The MacBook lineup now makes more sense than it has in a while, and the 16 inch, when it does arrive, won't be out of place. There won't be simply too many models. So Apple has simplified that in a very good way. And remember Apple AR, their headset, according to Digitimes, which doesn't have the best track record always, is claiming that project has been terminated internally 
at Apple. Now, Steve Trotton Smith is coming in here and saying, no, it's very unlikely that has happened as in iOS 13, there's a bunch of assets and things pertaining to this potential headset. So the probability of Apple canceling that just on a whim is unlikely as they've been working on it very, very recently. And if you have an Apple Watch and you're wondering why your walkie-talkie app doesn't work, it's because Apple has disabled that feature internally. They've found or someone has reported a bug that allows for eavesdropping to happen, much like the FaceTime bug before. Apparently, nobody has been affected yet, just wanted to let you know that will be re-enabled at a later time. And lastly, an iPhone, if it were released in 1984, a concept by Future Punk, I love the way it was filmed, even styled after Apple advertisements back then. Very cool stuff. Check out the full version down below. And to finish this off, I attempted to reproduce that breaking iMessage bug on both my iMac and my MacBook Pro, and it, it messed my computers up real bad. I got the message to send halfway and then just crashed my messages app. Point is, it's a very bad bug. It's a very good thing Apple fixed it because your iPhone could have been bricked with someone sending this out there. All right, guys, that's the latest. Can you tell I'm actually very, very excited hearing about this news? Apple is waking up that sleeping giant. I don't know if it's all the increased competition from Huawei, but they're doing something amazing. Thank you for watching, guys. Stay tuned. The next couple of years are going to be very exciting. Peace.